Hey guys, um, so I wasn't originally planning on doing anything uh, for the training videos today because I'm not training, but I did want to talk about something. So um, for this weight cut, or er, uh, dropping this weight, this is the first time um, I've ever used fat burners, and they worked, but one of the things I want to talk about was cycling uh, with not just with your training cycle but with the supplements you use um, it's usually a good idea to like when you have something like pre-workout or like thermogenic fat burners where uh, it's it's a lot of caffeine um, it's a good idea to cycle so your body doesn't just get reliant on that much caffeine so um, Actually, before I started taking the fat burners, I had cycled off the total war pre-workout because I was already starting to lower my um, my weights a bit. Well, I wasn't lowering. I, I deliberately plateaued, meaning I wasn't adding weights to my deadlift or my overhead press or my bench or anything. It was, you know, these, these are the numbers I did last week for my 3x3. Three three. This is what I'm doing this week. You know, not doing any more than... Uh, I feel is necessary and not really trying to push it. So I had already come off the total war because it's really, uh, I refer to it as heavy. Um, it's a really intense feeling and I was like, and once that was starting to be like, oh, maybe I should take two scoops. I was like, ah, maybe I should cycle off so I don't screw stuff up in my body. And so um, after today, I'm cycling off the fat burners until my next cut. Um, and I'm going to stay off the pre-workout for uh, a little while as well, just because it's not something that I want to um, have my body start to get too used to or to rely on. And it'll be pro uh, usually after competition, I take three or four days off. Uh, obviously with the pandemic, um, it could be up to two weeks. Um, the good news of training, and when I say training, I mean going to Y Crew, uh, doing Muay Thai, doing Jiu Jitsu. Um, I do have some weights and resistance bands at home. I have my yoga mat, I have a foam roller, um, I have a heating pad. So everything, I have an almost full thing of Tiger Bomb. So even if I do have to quarantine at home, I can still uh, continue to build muscle and, um, you know, work different, different things like, you know, it'll obviously focus more on my biceps, triceps, and shoulders, uh, there, but I can still do stuff like goblet squats. I can do, um, you know, different types of, uh, kind of, kind of, um, like flies or what, what have you with my resistance band so um, I'm not too too worried about even if I do have to isolate losing too much muscle or anything um, it's just you know see so it's a good idea to once you compete or you hit your competition or um, whatever you're going for you know you're going for that PR this week uh, to rest afterwards because um, just speaking from experience with uh, competitions, if I'm really locked in, it takes me, if I'm really locked in during the competition, uh, I am not useful for anything active for the rest of the day. Um, if I'm not as fully locked in, I'm still pretty wrecked for the day, but the next day I'm good to go. Uh, when I am fully locked in, go as hard as I can, uh, like, I, like, can't work out the next day and then the day after I kind of can but I have to be lighter about it uh, it was much different when I was competing in college and high school because every week there was a tournament or something um, sometimes twice a week uh, but even still that wasn't um, well for, for me it wasn't like everything required every competition required this full build up and cool down and everything because it was every week so it was like all right yeah that's what I do on Saturday the same thing when I was playing football like, all right, yeah fri Friday night is the football game and you know it, it's you know you're there with your team and you know so 
you're, you're on the sidelines, you're sitting there, you're, or you're on the edge of the mat, you're sitting there waiting, you're warming up. All right, you know, I'm up, I go, you know, go balls to the wall for six minutes, seven minutes. I think, I, I think my longest wrestling match ever was eight minutes, but, which is a long time, but still. Um, these jiu-jitsu matches, we're going to be doing our five minutes, but there's no breaks. Is in wrestling um, for college, it's three, um, yeah, it's three, two, two. So three minutes, start neutral. Um, two minutes, uh, you know, you flip a coin, red or green picks top, bottom, neutral. And then same thing for the third. Uh, well, it's whoever got the choice in the second. The other person gets the choice in the third. Uh, but it's five minutes, which is almost as long as a wrestling match. And there's no break to stop and catch your breath. And, like, the, the breaks in a wrestling match are not like a UFC fight where it's, like, you go five minutes and then you have a full minute to catch your breath. It's like, I flip it, all right, you, uh, top, bottom, neutral. Okay, get set, other person on, go. So you have, like, I mean, if it's a slow-ass ref, you have maybe 30 seconds to catch your breath. You get no water during it. It's just slow your heart rate down a little bit and then go again um whereas but even not having that makes these a little bit harder and uh did find out this morning that um there was no one else in my bracket for uh the adult intermediate heavyweight which is uh sub 225 i'm sitting at about 223 right now um so they bumped me up to <laughs> masters super heavyweight uh intermediate which is sub 250 um i'm not really worried about that um and i think they have the masters a little bit low they you know they start masters at 30 and i think that's kind of unfair to the people uh who are doing it but um no i think if you move it back like five years 35 that's a little bit more accurate but whatever um they so uh, it's not like, uh, I don't know how old this guy is. Um, I, di I didn't look, but it, it's just me and him. Um, so I'm not too, too worried. It's his first, or I, I did look at his record. So his first, um, this is his first time at intermediate, which means it's the first time with leg locks, uh, which is good for me because I'm not good at leg locks. Um, I can do them. Mostly I do that, I attempt them to make people think that I can do them so they get nervous and then I take them down and pass their guard. Um, but it, so I'm, I, the way I look at it is we're essentially in the same place. Um, he might be a bit heavier than me, uh, which is not something that bothers me. Um, I, the way I view it is I'll just be faster and be in better shape. Um, yeah, so next week I'm going to deload. There will be no filming, um, no, no daily filming uh, until my next competition. Uh, I might have a couple of videos up about uh, what my nutrition looks like in the off season, um, how I program my heavy lifts so I can still get in and train, how I, uh, you, you know, how I build my week. Um, you know, my gi versus no gi split, you know, how often I do, you know, clinch versus long striking, uh, in Muay Thai, that kind of stuff. So we'll see about that. But, um, yeah, that's all I got to say for today. I just want to talk a little bit about, um, different cycles and the importance of rest and recovery. Oh yeah. Recovery. That was the thing I was going to say. Um, it's very, very important to recover properly. Um, not only after competition, but after training. And right now, it's much harder for me to fully recover because I'm used to using saunas like once a week. And I don't have that during a pandemic. So I, I know I've been feeling tighter in certain areas and I'm not recovering um, as fully, but I've made up for it by having the Red Con one fade out um, where I'm sleeping better than I ever really have. Um, it, it's and uh the multivitamin that i take i've never taken well that's not true i've taken multivitamins before but not like every single day um have kind of closed that gap a little bit it's just it's not all the way back 
but it's very important to recover and f figure out everyone recovers differently you have to figure out what works best for your body so like i know i love saunas i know people can't stay in them like for more than five minutes it's just brutal to them so uh it's a really important part of training and being able to compete at your peak is knowing how to recover properly with that i'll sign off uh next the next video that you'll see in this will be the competition see ya